after a four. It's the, you know, the perils of living in the mountains. All across the West tonight, many communities are on edge, hoping for the best as wildfires threaten homes and businesses. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to West Coast Wrap. I'm Alex Savage. Tonight, thousands of people are being told to evacuate as numerous wildfires burn out of control. Hot, windy conditions are challenging fire crews on the front lines. The most destructive fires are in California. That's where dozens of homes burned over the weekend. There are also large fires burning in Nevada and Idaho as well. We begin tonight's coverage in Southern California with Fox 11's Laura Diaz, who's following the line fire in San Bernardino County. We can go in a moment's notice. Scott Swift lives on Sugar Pine Circle in Angeles Oaks. He and his wife are no strangers to fires. Monday, Angeles Oaks was one of the many communities in the foothills of the San Bernardino Mountains ordered to evacuate as uncontrolled wildfire continues to burn. 11,000 people told to pack up. The sheriff came down earlier and said, hey, it's mandatory now. And I said, yeah, we'll keep an eye on it. You know, we got the trailer already packed up and and all the papers and everything in there and all the pictures and stuff. As we talked, a mix of rain and ash fell down on us. Beds made. Swift showed us his trailer, the comforts of home and irreplaceable items in tow. The deed to the house, pinks to the car, the titles. Up Highway 38, there were multiple road closures. Emergency personnel at the ready. Brush was urgently being cleared. As smoke choked the sky, making it unhealthy for everybody, we found a crew hard at work strategizing. Strategies to put line around the fire where we can, where we can safely engage the crews and uh, try to box everything in, keeping it out of the community. So everything's kind of working out, uh, you know, in our favor right now. As of early evening, the line fire putting more than 36,000 homes, businesses and structures at risk as the fire quadrupled over the weekend. Scott took it in stride. We've been through it before. It's the, you know, the perils of living in the mountains. And that was Fox 11's Laura Diaz reporting for us tonight. In Northern California, evacuation orders remain in place in Clear Lake. That's where a fast-moving brush fire tore through a neighborhood late yesterday. Today, crews were able to stop forward progress on the Boyles fire. It's now 40% contained but it destroyed roughly 30 homes and other buildings, along with dozens of vehicles in the southern part of the city. And crews are concerned that gusty winds could potentially reignite this fire. The county is actually under fire weather watch until Wednesday due to the substantially low RHs and the wind uptake. Everything right now is very dry, so anywhere that the embers are carried by the column that they fall has the potential to start a new fire. Lee, there have been no injuries reported with that fire and the cause is still under investigation tonight. Dramatic new video shows firefighters running to escape a wall of flames in Southern California. This was the scene on Saturday as firefighters worked on the bridge fire northeast of Los Angeles. Flames spread quickly in the San Gabriel Canyon area where they were positioned. Crews pulled back quickly to get to safety and there's no word on any injuries tonight. Since that fire started on Saturday, more than 1,200 acres have burned. There's no containment on the fire tonight, and the cause is being investigated. For more, let's bring in KTVU meteorologist Rosemary Orozco, who is tracking the hot, windy conditions that are really challenging those fire crews across the West. Rosemary? You're right, Alex. The excessive heat, the dry conditions. This is the driest time of year for this area, uh, awaiting the rains that will hopefully come in the next uh, four to six weeks or so. Phoenix, Arizona, 110 today, also experiencing some excessive heat. And still at this hour this evening, 104 reported in Phoenix as we look over towards Las Vegas 99 83 for a downtown Los Angeles. Now we are beginning to see some relief over areas of the Pacific Northwest all the way down to about central California. So where we have that fire burning in Lake County, still very dry, still very breezy, but not quite as hot as what we were looking at uh, earlier today when some areas were reaching above 100 degrees, including uh, the city of Sacramento, the uh, state capital there in California. 
Meanwhile, 110 reported over areas again of Phoenix. There is an advisory for dangerous heat. Once again, the excessive heat warning stretching from areas of Santa Barbara County through Los Angeles County into San Diego County for tomorrow. This doesn't expire until the uh, evening hours and anywhere from 95 degrees to 105 will be a possibility and it does stretch over towards the eastern border there of Nevada as well as Arizona. A look here at the system that is providing some relief over the Pacific Northwest. A trough that has developed that will play as we roll through your uh, Wednesday. Notice even some rain, a possibility over the Pacific Northwest. So this is some good news as we are beginning to see some change. Temperatures will come up slightly late in the week and then back down again, getting into the weekend. When it comes to the next uh, three days, starting in areas over the Pacific Northwest, again, Seattle going to be mostly cloudy, maybe even a few scattered showers. Temperatures ranging from low to mid to upper 60s for the next few days. San Francisco also seeing a drop in temperatures at least over the next couple of days before we bump those numbers up again uh, in event uh, some of these areas uh, the inland areas of the bay reaching into the 90s over the last few days those temperatures are finally gone starting tomorrow and then as we get into Los Angeles also beginning to see things cool down the one spot that we are not going to see any relief over the next few days Phoenix, Arizona with the excessive heat continuing with triple digit heat all the way through the weekend. It looks like Saturday, Sunday will be the first possibility of falling below 100 degrees. Alex. All right, Rosemary, thank you. A wildfire in Boise County, Idaho has grown to more than 120,000 acres. Crews expect that low humidity and strong winds will continue to be a challenge through tomorrow. The Wapiti fire is burning through the Boise National Forest and the Sawtooth National Forest. It started late last month with a lightning strike and it's about 12% contained tonight. A fire near Reno has grown to more than 4,700 acres since it started on Saturday. The Davis fire has destroyed at least 14 buildings with no containment. People north of the Scripps State Wildlife Management Area have been ordered to evacuate. As many as 14,000 others have been warned they may need to leave. Video on social media shows some people surveying burn areas. The cause of that fire is still under investigation tonight. And that fire did prompt the Democratic vice presidential nominee to postpone a rally that was planned in Reno for today. Minnesota Governor Tim Walz still visited the city, but instead of a campaign event, he met with first responders. After that stop, Walls headed down to Las Vegas. Tomorrow, he'll attend a campaign reception in Las Vegas, which is closed to the public. Vice President Harris has now arrived in Philadelphia ahead of tomorrow's debate with former President Trump. She left Pittsburgh this afternoon, where she'd spent several days preparing for the debate. Tomorrow's debate will be held at Philadelphia's National Constitution Center, which is within walking distance of Independence Hall. And there were no public events held today by the GOP ticket, but former President Trump is planning to head west later this week. He's set to attend a campaign fundraiser in Los Angeles on Thursday. After that, he'll attend another fundraiser in the San Francisco Bay Area on Friday. Tickets to that event in Woodside are reportedly as costly as $500,000 per couple. The Trump campaign has raised more than $24 million just from donors in California. Coming up tonight here on West Coast Wrap, rail service unlike anything most people on this continent have seen. And it's coming to the West within years. We'll show you what makes it so special. Also coming up tonight, a new shakeup in a West Coast murder case that has gotten national attention. Why a judge wants to relocate that trial. Mourners gathered in the West Bank today to honor the life of a Seattle woman who witnesses say was shot and killed by Israeli troops. Security forces carried the body of 26 year old activist Aishanor Agee through the streets draped in a Palestinian flag. A witness claims the University of Washington graduate was shot and killed by Israeli forces while demonstrating against settlements in the occupied West Bank. Israel says an investigation into her death is underway. AG had dual citizenship with Turkey. The Turkish Foreign Ministry is working on repatriating her body. A trial for the man accused of stabbing four college students to death is being moved out of the small Idaho city where those crimes happened. Fox 13's Shira Matsuzawa breaks down this shakeup in Brian Koberger's murder case.
After months of back and forth motions, the judge in the trial for Brian Koberger are granted a change of venue. The 20 page court document citing concerns that given the high profile attention this case has received, it would be difficult finding an impartial jury in a county of some 40,000 people and that the defendant wouldn't get a fair trial at the Lataw County Courthouse in Moscow, Idaho. The same city where Koberger is accused of stabbing and killing University of Idaho students Ethan Chapin, Zana Kernodal, Madison Mogan, and Kaylee Gonsalves in an off campus house in November of 2022. Defense lawyers presented survey results showing the jury pool around Moscow was biased, while prosecutors argued that the survey itself was flawed. Shannon Gray is the attorney for the Gonsalves family. They believe that Latak County was the proper venue to try this case, and they thought that, you know, they could find fair and impartial juries and jurors in Latak County. But with so much attention surrounding this case, does changing the venue make a difference? Criminal defense attorney and former Idaho attorney general, as well as former lieutenant governor Dave Leroy, says, yes, it can, on two levels. One, under Idaho law and the U.S. Constitution, he says it's important that Koberger is given a fair trial. And that means in a jurisdiction where there is arguably the least bias and best opportunity to find that fair and objective jury. The other reason... We do not want to have on appeal an issue that this fair trial judgment was not very seriously considered and the best possible remedies applied even before the trial begins. The judge did not specify where the trial will be moved to, but Koberger is asking the court to move it to the Ada County Courthouse in Boise, nearly six hours away. What is unusual about this ruling is the judge himself at the district court level did not determine where the venue of the trial would be. Instead, he referred it to the Idaho Supreme Court to make that judgment. But number one, that's very unusual. I don't know that that's ever happened uh, in recent history. In a statement from the Gonzalez family, they said in part, as victims' families, you are left to just watch like everyone else, and you have little rights or say in the process, and at the same time, you are the most vested in the outcome. They went on to say they still believe Lataw County is where the trial deserves to be held to help the community heal. It's really difficult for them because it's their first, you know, first time to have been in this position and hopefully the last time ever. And that was Fox 13's Shira Matsuzawa reporting tonight. This trial is set to begin in June of next year and it's expected to last about three months. Jury selection began today in the federal trial against three former Memphis police officers, all charged in the beating death of a man from Sacramento. Tyree Nichols died in January of last year, three days after a traffic stop. Tadarius Bean, Demetrius Hallett, and Justin Smith have all pleaded not guilty in this case. Body camera and surveillance video shows the officers tasing, pepper spraying, and beating Nichols. A total of five now former officers were fired and charged. Two of those five have since pleaded guilty. New images released just today show some of what riders will experience when a new high speed rail line opens between Las Vegas and Southern California. The company tasked with building Brightline's new trains went public with renderings of what those cars will look like. Siemens Mobility says they'll include wide seats, internet connectivity, space for wheelchairs that exceeds ADA requirements, as well as lounge cars. Brightline's goal is to have service between Las Vegas and Southern California by the summer of 2028. That's when Los Angeles will be hosting the Olympics. Turning back now to the hot weather all across the West and thousands of homes and businesses are without power tonight during Southern California's ongoing heat wave. As Fox 11's Hal Eisner tells us, anger is growing among many people across the city of Los Angeles over those outages. Your power's back on. Yes. And how do you feel about that? I feel great. But Anthony Sercio is not happy with the Los Angeles Department of Water and Power. He's an attorney that lives in Silver Lake. I've already prepared my uh, complaint for reimbursement for the expenses that I've incurred over the last couple of days with this power loss. So this claim amounts to how much money? 
uh, about $600. When the power in his place went off Saturday around 4 p.m., the heat was too much, so he decided to head to a $200 a night hotel. I had to rent a hotel that was pet friendly uh, because I couldn't stay here. I have a medical device that I use at night, and uh, without electricity, I can't run that. He blames LADWP for not having redundant systems and not being prepared for a heat storm, knowing full well it could happen. He thinks the infrastructure for LADWP is inadequate. I think that they should take responsibility for this. I do think that this reflects some negligence on the utility's part because this was not an unpredicted event. Nonetheless, it has affected thousands like Jason Thomas, who suffered through two days of misery in a house filled with... Stagnant air. Um like a heat buildup just throughout the day. Sunday after Cruz fixed the blown transformer in the Sherman Oaks area where Jason Thomas was house sitting for his dad who had been hospitalized, the power came back on. But crews were back today. They said they had to turn off the power again to fix something they didn't fix right yesterday. Back to Silver Lake. This is my fifth day today straight, 16 hour shifts. Every day. Every day. That's the way it's been for electrical workers spread all over the LADWP landscape, like here in the hills above Silver Lake, where another transformer blew. The culprit, hot days and hot nights. And the temperature doesn't drop. Our equipment doesn't get a chance to cool off. And sometimes, he says, they meet customers that are as hot as those temperatures outside. So how do you deal with that? Um, answer the questions the best of my ability and let us continue on with our work to shorten the outage. Be courteous best we can. And that was Fox 11's Hal Eisner reporting tonight. As of this afternoon, officials said about 6,700 customers were without power across Los Angeles. The FBI says Americans were duped out of more than $5.6 billion last year through fraud schemes involving cryptocurrency. According to an FBI report released today, that's a 45% jump in losses from the year before. The FBI says it received nearly 70,000 complaints with investment fraud, accounting for nearly $4 billion of losses. The report says scammers will often make contact through dating apps or social media. Coming up tonight here on West Coast Rap, Rap superstar Kendrick Lamar, a Southern California native, picked to headline this year's Super Bowl halftime show. Tonight, TMZ breaks down why some music fans are questioning that decision. Plus, a young card collector from California with a very lucky pull, the one-of-a-kind card that could be worth as much as $100,000. The remains of a World War II soldier will be laid to rest at his home in Oregon this week. Service members at Portland International Airport carried the casket of Army Private William Calkins. He was captured by Japanese forces during World War II and died in a prisoner of war camp in 1942. Calkins' remains were identified earlier this year after being exhumed, along with other unknown soldiers buried at a cemetery in the Philippines. A burial in Hillsboro, Oregon is planned for this Friday. Boeing has reached a tentative contract agreement with the union that represents 33,000 of its workers. This deal comes just days before a threatened strike was set to begin at the plane maker's main factories. Most of the company's planes are built in Renton, Washington. This tentative agreement includes 25% raises over the next four years, along with better health care and retirement benefits. Boeing workers still need to approve the deal, and their vote is scheduled to happen later this week. The Department of Transportation has launched an investigation into rewards programs at the four largest airlines. The agency sent letters to American, Delta, Southwest and United Airlines requiring them to hand over records with detailed information about their rewards programs, practices and policies. The department aims to combat deceptive or anti-competitive practices such as the devaluation of earned rewards, hidden or dynamic pricing and extra fees, as well as reduced competition and choice. Tonight, there is some criticism of the NFL's decision to pick rapper Kendrick Lamar to headline this year's Super Bowl halftime show. The Grammy Award winner and Compton, California native will take the stage during February's big game in New Orleans. And of course, many people are excited about that upcoming performance since Kendrick has one of the most talked about songs of the year. That would be the Drake diss track, Not Like Us. 
However, TMZ is reporting some music fans are questioning the pick and suggesting that the league should have gone with rapper Lil Wayne, who's a New Orleans native. He said he would be honored to do it. It was something he wanted to do uh, for his city or uh, for the state of Louisiana. And um, the fact that it didn't happen just seems odd to some people, especially considering that, remember, Kendrick Lamar was on stage for the uh, Dr. Dre halftime show uh, a couple of years ago when they were here in L.A. And everyone said that made sense. And after the decision was announced by the league, Kendrick put out a statement and it said in part that he is ready to remind the world why they got the right one. Super Bowl 59 will be played at the newly renovated Caesar Superdome in New Orleans on February 9th. This is new video showing off some of those upgrades that were done to the dome. It was posted on social media over the weekend. An eight year old trading card collector from Fresno County, California, recently hit the jackpot. The child pulled a one of a kind Olympic trading card that features the trifecta of basketball stars Stephen Curry, LeBron James and Kevin Durant. As Fox 26's Sophia Lesios tells us, this card could be worth $100,000. Out in the countryside in Fresno County, eight year old Andrew Zonveld says he's been collecting trading cards for the last two years. And here's a signed baseball card. It's numbered two. His dad, Andy Zonfield, says he did that when he was Andrew's age. I remember collecting cards as a kid, so we just got back into it and decided to buy a pack. This year, the Zonveld family decided to watch the Olympics. We were watching the men's Olympic team win gold, and uh, Andrew liked watching Steph Curry, LeBron James, and Kevin Durant, and all the big players. Zonveld says Tops, a trading card company, was doing a sale on Olympic card packs, so he bought one. I only paid $49.99 for these five cards right here. But he ended up getting two packs in the mail. The second pack, eight-year-old Andrew says, was heavier than the first one. Why is this one card so heavy? We might get the autograph. It wasn't an autographed card, but it was something pretty rare. They were sent a one-of-a-kind gold Steph Curry, LeBron James, and Kevin Durant Team USA Olympic trading card. When I saw it, I, I didn't really know what to believe. I said, hey, this is a one-of-one -one card. This is, this is a big hit. Zonville says this card is so rare, it could be worth $100,000. My mom, she said, look it up, see how much it's worth. My dad was like, no, there's only one made in the world, and we got it. The father and son says they didn't start this hobby to get rich. It was just something to bond over. Now Zonveld is hoping his kids can hold on to this memory as long as they can. My kids are still young, and uh, I, the youngest might not even remember this when he's older, but you know, we're just trying to soak it all in and just get the experience more than any value of this car. Keep that card in a safe place. That was Fox 26's Sophia Lesios reporting tonight from Central Valley, the California Central Valley. Zonfeld says that he is sending that card to New York to have it put in an auction at the end of this month. And finally tonight, Apple is offering some new upgrades to its most popular products featuring advancements in artificial intelligence. Today, the Silicon Valley tech giant held what it called its Glow Time event and unveiled a new iPhone 16. The phone comes in four different models and they will all be equipped with a special chip to support a series of AI tools. Apple also introduced upgrades to its AirPods line with a new model that contains a built-in hearing aid function. There's also a new version of the Apple Watch with a feature to help detect sleep apnea. The new iPhones range in price from $800 up to $1,200. They hit stores late next week. Most of Apple's AI functions will be rolling out later this year as part of software updates. They'll only be available on the new iPhone 16s and on last year's iPhone 15 models. And that does it for West Coast Wrap tonight. We appreciate you watching as always. Have a great night.